Hey, what's up guys? This is Jagger at Slash Whatever, and we are going to take a second look at Never Alone. Oh, no, not continue. There we go. Um, this is one of the free games with PlayStation Plus this month. And last time we watched a couple of these inside videos. Um, we've since unlocked six more, so we're just going to have a quick look at some of these and just see what they've got to say. When I was growing up, uh, my grandpa uh, had a pet white fox. If you're a good friend with a fox, when there's danger abound, they try to keep you from getting into trouble. They pull tricks here and there, and foxes are uh, like uh, spoiled little kids in that way. When you let her out, she go prancing out in the snow, jumping in the air. I know she is happy then. <laughs> Come running at me and jump on my chest, knock me backwards, lick my face, and, and I try not to let it. So that was my memory of my grandpa's pet fox. Caribou was it provided for us in many ways. Our clothing in those days was made of all caribou skin. I grew up wearing caribou pants, mittens, caribou skin mattress, blankets. Some people had boots that were made with wolf leggings, sealskin sole bottoms. Baleen was shaved to make insoles. They kept us quite dry and warm as well. But the caribou skin clothing was the best. And we would get as many yearlings as we could for our outer clothing. And for a heavy winter, we would get caribou in February or March because the hair was the longest and the skin was the thickest. And we would use those for our winter gear. With that stuff on, you could sleep outside in 50 below and it wouldn't bother you a bit. Silla is the weather. It also means the atmosphere. Here's the Nuna, or the land. And it's anything from the land into the moon, the sun, the stars. That's Silla. It's, uh, it's a very spiritual, and we have a relationship with Silla. Uh, Silla has a soul in the same way we do as people, in the same way animals do. I think spirit helpers in and of themselves are really about how we're connected with things. And so it may be that there is a spirit helper that shows themselves as a bird to show you the way home. Or it may be a spirit helper that actually decides to show themselves with the face and body of a man instead of their animal form. And so I think one of the things that's hard to understand is that it's not one way of seeing things. It's one way of knowing you're connected to everything. We've always had that spirituality of everything around us. It's the interaction you have with the air you breathe, the, the ocean that you gather resources from, the rivers from which you gather fish, the tundra from which you pick berries, the animals that give themselves. It's, it's all, of, all of that. In the winter, when we were traveling, we didn't build sod houses, we built snow houses. In Canada, they call them igloo, but here in Alaska, we call them apuya. We'd do a day of travel, and then we'd make an apuya. The next day, my father would set traps, spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat, and then the following day, we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at Dubar. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. 
we just visit with them and my dad and my sister were glad to see each other and they'd talk away while kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt or with my grandmother. And then he'd start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into eight to five kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different kind. We're in ecological time. Drum is something that's common to all cultures in Alaska. All cultures have a drum that may have some stylistic differences or differences in the materials that's made, but it's still a recognition of life and vitality. And the drum mirrors the heartbeat. And when you continue drumming soon, it will be in line with your heartbeat. Because that's what it's supposed to be, the heartbeat of the community. And it symbolizes vitality. And it's, it's the most tremendous feeling to be in a room and to have one long row of all the drummers and to have that feeling of unity and everyone beating in harmony. The drum beat in unison is the most beautiful feeling. And to know that you're connected, you're on the land that you are connected to. And even if you grew up outside of the community, that which is in you comes from this area. And it's, it's the greatest feeling. <laughs> They're just like other people. They just happen to be very small and extremely strong. These are stories that are common throughout Alaska. It's normally that people are you know, size from your elbow to the tips of your fingers, and they possess superhuman strength. So they may be tiny, but they can carry a whole caribou. And if you go up north and you talk to a number of the people in the community, they'll talk about having seen the little people. There's a place at home that we know, but we don't profess it to anybody. But it's not like the boogeyman. They can be mischievous, they can be ornery, or they can be helpers. And every now and then, we might have the opportunity to see them, especially if they want us to see them. The fact that it's across Alaska really tells you something about our history and how we interacted with nature around us. Hmm. So, that's the end of the Unlocked Highlights. I'm definitely going to watch them um, as they appear in the game from now because some of them appear to, well, most of them appear to have some context to what you're doing. Um, ah, okay, so we can just continue from this point. Okay, there's the little people. Uh, it seems to have put me back a little way. No, oh, it's not too much there. Okay. I think I have to be the fox for this bit. Yeah, that was it. Hilya ra ra tuat beak syarun asi ane piking suna hidup tu seburu muka. I wasn't in control of the girl at that point. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, 
has put me back a little bit. I remember doing this one last time. Ibeak <laughs> The bola is what we call kilami town. And the kilami town is made out of braided sinew tied out to some heavy bone which you could twirl. In my case, we're catching ducks. When we were out uh, whaling, sometimes the ducks start flying. And they're good for duck hunting. You know, uh, if you're a whaling crew, you can't make too much noise. So you can't use a shotgun for um, getting some duck soup handy, you know. So bolo was a really handy weapon to use for catching ducks. You know, the ducks fly in, you throw it up and tangles up the bird, and down they go.
Dobra ta inna i lechotek. Selatane luna kemata in yoholo kasohak. In yoholo mtaadu kameo nutkakowa. Agala nive akse agarwado sapere naksimar. I've already seen that one, I'm not sure why it's offering to show us that again. Mm. 
Scaredest I've ever been. I was 12 years old. We floated out on a piece of ice uh, while we were duck hunting. It was a bluebird day, just clear blue skies. And there was three of us, myself, my brother, and my dad. Next thing you know, we see this dark, dark shadow on the ice. Uh, we look and it goes behind us. So we, we all jumped up startled and uh, my dad, he started running. We got back to the ridge there. The, uh, the ice had fractured cracked and broke off and we were floating away we were we were drifting <laughs> it was close enough to where my dad would have made it he stopped and he thought about throwing us across and if one of us was on the other side we would be split up so he stopped and he just so happened to have a, a cell phone on him 911 didn't pick up <laughs> that's the worst feeling in the world right there 911 did not pick up so he left a, a message because they record their calls. Once he had relayed that information, his cell phone died. That was the scariest moment I've ever had in my life. We were floating away and I thought we were left for dead. Uh, he kept calm during this situation. Uh, he's bringing out everything positive in this case. You know, I'm crying, my brother's freaking out. It went from clear blue to dense, dense fog. Within a couple hours, we heard the chopper flying around, so they must have gotten our message. Uh, we thought we were saved, and then the chopper sound went away. So we lit some of the sled on fire. It's plastic. We thought black smoke in the fog would create some kind of marker. Chopper pilot uh, had mentioned uh, when we got rescued, you could see a glow in the fog and he slowed down there and sure enough as soon as he slowed down uh, we got within visual that was definitely the scariest moment of my life was floating away and not knowing what the outcome was going to be She could not look to Pano Ilgania Tilama.
Hmm. Not entirely sure what we're supposed to do from here. Sasha Romera Lugu Nanok and Nakubit Pinetitara Vito Kakame Nanok Nipet Jelai Chop We are very much aware of the climate change. And it's been for many years, even before climatologists were noticing the change, Inuit were already saying, Sila Alanmoktok, our climate is changing. If the heat is going the way it is right now, for us it's going to be pretty bad. Different birds are coming, and they're coming earlier, and sometimes rain is more than what we want because when there's more rain, we know it's going to melt the permafrost. In my time as a young quail, when I was nine years old, we're hunting from ice that was about 25 feet thick. And there was giant icebergs already floating, coming by. That was the first signs of a changing climate. Ice that never broke before was now moving. Now, here it is 50 years later, we're hunting whale from ice that's 18 inches thick. There's no more thick ice. It's creating a malfunction in our whaling season, is, is what it is. And actually, more than that, all seasons in general. I think we are more scientists than more people will realize. We have more knowledge of those things than people will ever know. Hmm, I'm just going to check that message that came in. Bear with me a second. Okay, that is just a message about potentially finishing the GTA Online heists. Just reply. Okay, so we'll give this a little while longer and then we'll probably switch out to GTA. Oh dear.
My brother was out seal hunting. He got attacked from behind and managed to grab his knife and save himself. When he came to realize, oh no, it's a mother. We've always known traditionally that we avoid killing a mother. It's always been sacred to us to protect them. He had to present himself to the council. And so he was giving the job to mother the baby. And we kept it. It got so big, it went over the barricade one day and got to the dark food. And that was an indication that, oh, oh brother better go teach it how to survive on its own. So he did. I really got attached to the bear because I more or less grew up with it. And some days when brother took him walking, once in a great while he'd put me on the bear and I would ride on it like a horse. Just, I was just the happiest little girl in the world. So bear with me a second. get through this bit without getting crushed and then we'll go and play some GTA. <clears throat> no, don't go back. Thank you. 
kill this one more guy. And then we're going to play some GTA. <laughs> So that wall jump mechanism is a little bit flaky. Alright, so we're going to leave that here. And we're going to go play some GTA. Get some dailies done and see if we can finish the hosts. Uh, I can see your comments now. Okay, so what is this? Bears and stuff. This is um, Never Alone. This is uh, Never Alone. Ooh, dear, I didn't know the bear could climb up there. Yeah, this is Never Alone. It was free with uh, PlayStation Plus this month. Um, so you can download it for nothing for the next few days until the next set of games come out, probably uh, in about 10 days. Um, it's pretty cool. It's probably worth a look. It's. I really like the way it's kind of linking... Um, Sort of classic platform game mechanics to real world stuff like the breaking up of the ice and shrinking ice, climate change, all that kind of stuff is really cool. And a little, um, a little, ah, oh, little videos in between are really nice to get. However, it is time to play some GTA. <laughs> 